Bend me, shape me any way you want to. Long as you love me, it's all right. Because you got the power to turn on the light. Well, I actually have the power to turn on the light, and I just did. Right there, Ted Richards, the tubes are starting to glow on the old transmitter. Yes, and if there's a bad tube, I have to go down to the drugstore, you know, take the tube out and go down to the drugstore where they'll have a tube tester. And I put the tube in there to see if it's good or bad. And guess what? It's always going to be bad. (laughs) And then we call the TV repairman. I remember this stuff. I was just a little kid. But I remember going down to the Rexall drugstore with my dad to test the tube on the black and white television. (laughs) Yeah, those were the days, my friend. I thought they'd never end. I was going to get my Poker King uh, book because I've never showed you that. Maybe I will at some point. I'll just disappear for a little bit. Um, Michael Savage, who one of my uh, uh, emailers discovered he's always getting up and saying i gotta go get one of my books this guy's written a lot of books michael savage jack savage is based (laughs) loosely on him (laughs) um but i'm not going to do any more jack savages until i feel it in my gut and uh you know the views were okay but they weren't uh, anything special hello steven spielich hello ted richards uh Stefan, I won't call you Stephanie this time. Hi, Jack from Quebec. Uh, Brendan Noyce, hello, Jack. And all, I made it. Looks like you made it. Although I thought so before. I don't know. Uh, Brenda Kendall, I mean, Barbara Kendall. (laughs) Hi, Jack and friend. And friend. Hmm. Uh, Stephen Garvis, hi, Jack. Top of the evening to you. Yes, top of the evening. Here's my buddy Richard Lyon. Haven't gotten to talk to Richard this week. It's been a busy week, Richard, maybe for you as well. Seems like every day there was uh, things needing my attention. You know, you retire, and then there's this thing called errands and chores and doctor's appointments. And, oh, yes, there's always something to pick up at the pharmacy. Oh, my God goodness. Um, and uh, here's someone new, I believe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Corina, Corina. I may have to put on my specs, my Dollar Tree specs. They're closing some Dollar Trees and family dollars, maybe a thousand. I don't think they'll be doing that in Texas where my son delivers to them. Corina Venable. Hello, Jack. Hi. Uh, Were you watching from uh, Karina? Nice to have you aboard. Linda Justice is here. Hey, Linda Justice. Justice for Linda, I say. Hi. Uh, Shell. Hi, Jack. Shelly from Canada. Really? I would have never known with your uh, alien emojis. Hello, everybody, she says. And Deborah Lake. How you feeling, Deborah? Isn't it funny? That's the first thing we ask you. How you feeling? Hello, all. Barbara Kendall is saying hello to Brenda. And then there's uh, Woodsley Summercraft. Is that Rob? Do I remember that right? Woodsley Summercraft. And tell us all about your Summercraft. Will you be putting it in the water soon? Or do you wait until the 21st of June, which is officially summer, right? So tonight's topic, fairy tale, eh? Well, I will comment on it. Sure. Did you write me about that? Because like three people all of a sudden wrote me about this fairy tale song by uh, Elvis Presley. He sang it. Patty with an eye. Good evening, Jack. And uh, to the whole chat. Yeah. Paul McCreary. Hello, Jack. How you feeling, Paul? How you doing? Richard Lyons says we were busy doing a closing on a condo. Well, well, well. (laughs) <laughs> where is your condo is it in palm beach uh, florida or somewhere else um nancy demarco hi nancy one of our faithful hello everyone mary uh, Bronner. uh hello there hey there from west kentucky i'm back okay mary uh we do have quite a few people from kentucky which is very interesting I know someone who sells cars in Kentucky. Well, Karen knows them better 
think he was in her class, but I did meet the man at the high school reunion. It's funny going to a high school reunion when you dropped out of school the day you turned 16, which I did the very day. I'm not kidding you. My birthday is coming up on uh, Thursday, my 68th birthday. And uh, on the 21st in 1972, my mom and I were at Feraldi Junior High, and uh, she let me quit school with the stipulation that I would get both a job and a GED. And she um, knew I was planning on going to broadcasting school. So I did all that. I did all that. I got my uh, GED, my GED, before my class even graduated. Then they said, we got to stop allowing this. Had to wait till you were 18 after that, you know, uh, because people were quitting school to uh, get a GED. <laughs> I had no use for the higher math. But The Higher Love by Steve Winwood, uh, me and Richard know all about that. West Palm Beach. So you're you're moving a spell. How many miles would that be from Palm Beach, uh, Richard? Hello, Julie Bacchus. Hello, sweet friends. Well, that's very nice. Gene Phillips. Hi, hi, hi. Gene Phillips Screwdriver is here. And then uh, Sandra, I want to say Farrar, you know, make it exotic, you know, like Jose Farrar. Do you remember him, Sandra? Farrah. Hi, Jack and friends. Sandra from, uh, oh, yes, uh, Emanuel's PA. Why am I blanking on how to pronounce that? All of a sudden, sometimes you have to write it out phonetically for me. I look forward to this chat each week. Isn't that nice? That's so wonderful. Never heard of you or Bob Joyce until two months ago. So a newbie. I like that. And now I love you both. Well, that's very, very nice to hear. Very, very nice. Uh, I've got ex-wives that don't love me anymore. <laughs> oh, dear. 62 watching right now. 15 have hit the like button. Yes, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please uh, hit the subscribe. And don't forget that notification bell. Because, like, this morning I came on at... Uh, 12 15 in the morning and ended up being on for an hour and a half with midnight ramblings 15 minutes late but midnight ramblings and we had a good time with some of our friends here others were sleeping even brenda was sleeping this time she was that tired um steven says don't forget oh, he's he's helping me out here steven spielich almost want to say steven spinach don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button yes yes we're over 6800 now 6800 subscribers and climbing thank you so much for that who would have seen that coming you know um i lost a couple of key people and i was starting to think oh boy oh boy uh um robin roman hello jack and everyone um, you're not doing too good, huh? Deborah Lake. Hi, uh, Robin. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, not good, but I praise the Lord. I'm getting better. Well, there's something encouraging. There's something, uh, uh, encouraging. Only one mile away from where I live now. And it's a condo. Well, what Richard, if the guy next door plays the bongos, what if he's, you know, a new wave drummer? I know the new wave doesn't apply anymore because it's now the old wave. <laughs> what do they call it now? Let's see. After new wave came, um, you know, groups like Creed. What were they called? They were called it's right on the tip of my tongue. Let me get out. Oh, yes. Would be really good if I could remember the name now of what came next. Heather, hello everyone. Hi, Heather. Kathleen uh, Wiedenbacher is here. Uh, Melissa VD, hello everybody. Jack and everyone. Bus lady, huh? From South Dakota. Oh, now you got me thinking about your pretty governor. I've got to expel those ideas of the flesh, but she seems like a wonderful woman. She's very funny in her commercials. You know, I don't know if you see them there in South Dakota, bus lady, um, but uh, she runs commercials around the country looking uh, to solicit help for people to move to South Dakota. And she pretends to be a plumber that's filling in until we get there or a, an accountant. And uh, her commercials are uh, uh very funny. Um, and um, 
I don't know how well it's been doing to bring people in, but I hear there has been people moving there. Uh, do they give you a, a for the winter? Do they give you a a, a specially treated thermal uh, suit so you don't get frostbite? <laughs> we'll be there, but not January, February, and March, maybe or December. Probably gets cold there early, right? I don't know. So, bus lady in South Dakota. Uh, I know I have a lot of questions for you now, but um, do you find those kids rowdy on the bus? If you're that kind of bus lady, do you have a monitor? Sometimes they give you a monitor that would just be like thrown out the window. They're not going to be able to <laughs> do too much, you know. Uh, um, Sabrina. Sabrina is here. Hi, Sabrina. wonder what your last name is. I know you're not Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh, who played Sabrina now, the Teenage Witch? I have to think. I know the name, but, I, you know, this one I won't, I won't uh, say all oh, my short-term memory because I didn't really watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, I watched Tabitha on Bewitched, though, when I was a kid. I did. Um, and uh, so Sabrina is here. Um, I don't know which Sabrina you are, but if you're the Sabrina, um, give me a clue that only Columbo, someone as smart as Columbo would know. I'll, I'll get it if you do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Jack. March 21st, 2024. Yes, Shelly, it's coming fast. And when I hit that, maybe if not already now, I have beat my father. I've lived longer than my father who died just Let's see. I think his birthday was on October 17th, 1967. He was 67 and he died. Wait a minute. See, uh, yeah, his birthday was the 17th of October. Did I say that already? But he died on October 1st. So he died 17 days short of his 68th birthday. So I guess I've beat him already, right? I've lived longer through the miracle of, and I probably have the same thing he had, which is cardiomyopathy. You know, I, I have it for sure, but uh, he probably didn't. They didn't have what they have now, like Mavacantin, which is a seems to be a great drug. If suddenly I grow a third, a second nose, I don't have two noses, a uh, second nose and uh, start to glow in the dark, well, I'll take it all back. But so far, so good. So far, so good. Um, so uh, welcome to you, Sabrina, whichever Sabrina you may be. <sighs> I've been putting up nice videos for Household of Faith, including the one that we released tonight that's going towards 400 in a few hours. I am Sabrina. I was hoping for a better clue, <laughs> Sabrina. Um, did I do a video? On this channel, Sabrina, that you inspired by one of your videos. I don't know how follow you how how well you follow me, but I credited you as the inspiration for the video. I did. I mean, for that, Sabrina. Did did I do a video that you inspired? Oh, she's playing games with me now. I am me, LOL. Let me see. What else can I ask you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I got to think about it. Got to be careful. Robin Roman. Hi, Brenda. She's talking to Brenda already, our, 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 our big star here. Uh, Brenda, nice to see you, says Melissa PD. Um, Henry A. Bradley, Shirley C. says happy Saturday night, everybody. Uh, Traveling Tiger from Wales. Hello, my buddy Lee. Uh, it is Lee, right? I forget after a while because we haven't corresponded, but he's too busy talking to Brenda. So I don't know why, Brenda, you don't have T-shirts made with your picture on it. Um, bus lady says, I was moderator for a charter bus. A moderator, not a... Um, when you say moderator, 
what does that mean? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think anyone can overthink the lyrics Elvis on stage dialogue during 1977. It reveals much more hidden references. I have listened to nearly uh, every concert throughout the 70s, says uh, Traveling Tiger. Um, okay, Sabrina, I see that. Do we have the... You like Bob. <laughs> Is Robert Wayne Joyce your daughter, Sabrina? Is Robert Wayne Joyce your daughter? Notice how I phrase that. I just said daughter. This is proof that it is only a matter of time <laughs> before I am I am tied to a chair near the nurses station, uh, lined up with everybody else with an alarm on me. <laughs> I will really try to make sure that doesn't happen, by the way. You like Bob. She's having fun with us. Um, is your father Robert Wayne Joyce, Sabrina? Not your daughter. <laughs> I should not drink before this show. But I am drinking during it right here. Bowl and basket. The house brand for ShopRite. Yeah, I haven't had that experience yet where somebody that I know of, that I know of, came on from, you know, the inner circle. The inner circle. I've spoken to several people in the inner circle. Dare I say this? I always have to think about this. Can I say somebody... That household of faith likes me a lot. That's as far as I can go. 108 viewing, and I haven't even started our main topic here. So don't go anywhere. We've got, we have a lot of fun here. I wish I had prizes, but I don't yet. You like Bob, Sabrina. And I got to keep this uh, going because it, uh, Adam Davidson is here. Hey, it's been a long time, Adam Davidson, son of John Davidson, who's 86 years old right now. I think John Davidson is 86. And in a place called Sandwich, I've got this right, Sandwich, New Hampshire, John Davidson has his own theater. And in starting in June, his season begins. And it goes through September where, you know, he's there on a fair, fairly regular basis, at least four or five shows a week. Anybody remember John Davidson? I met him in person. I did. My daddy was adopted. His parents worked for Al Capone. Whoa. He got adopted out of that. So that's my history. Okay. Just because you're not Sabrina Joyce does not mean that, um, that I'm disappointed. I welcome you. Welcome you. And look at that. Um, my daddy was adopted. His parents work for Al Capone. I guess when you work for Al Capone, there's no retirement plan, right? You can't go in one day and say, Al, I don't feel like doing this anymore. I think I'm going to retire. <laughs> You'll be part of a tire. <laughs> You'll be part of a tire. Uh, that's interesting. Even Katina Swatsworth has retracted a message. So I wonder what she was going to say. Now we're all wondering. Katina from Katina and the Waves. Um, Gene Phillips says, I remember him, saw him at the Brooklyn Fair. You saw Al Capone, uh, Gene? Oh, Brockton Fair. I'm sorry. Brockton. There used to be a Brockton up in western New York that I, I think. I remember because my first job in radio was in Dunkirk, New York. And I seem to remember a Brockton being in our general listening area. Kim is here, really? Kim. See, it's going by. Oh, Kim is a lackey. I knew it. She was a lackey. Hello from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I've been to your city. I have. Uh, Kim, I uh, think I did a gig with my second wife, who was a professional clown. One of the most gifted women that I've ever known. 
a woman of many talents. See, I'm speaking very nice about her. I loved her, but I didn't treat her like I loved her sometimes. Sometimes I would get upset when I, we were running behind, but since uh, she had this beautiful makeup, it took a long time to apply and beautiful costumes that she made herself. She put on her own makeup and uh, she did it all. She was incredible. And we played fairs and festivals. And we had at least one gig in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. But I live right over the line in Rock Hill, South Carolina there. Uh, so um, people from Charlotte would come over to Rock Hill to buy gas because it was cheaper there. You know, you, have you been to Rock Hill, South Carolina? Sharon uh, Stens. Now, if it were Sharon Lenz, I'd be even more thrilled. This is like with uh, Sabrina, I guess. <laughs> uh, Sharon uh, Stens. Uh, now, if you want some content, just fast forward a little bit if you're a content-only person and you're not enjoying all this, okay? Because we're getting some interesting one. Uh, Karen, I mean, Sharon Stens. Hi, everyone. I'm a newbie, and we're so welcome to... We'll welcome you, and we're thrilled to have you. I appreciate that. 116 watching right now. Gary Lanier is here. Me too. Where are you from, Gary? Where are you from, uh, Sharon? See, if you were Sharon Lenz, that would mean you were Sarah on Dark Shadows. Uh, Sharon uh, Smith Lenz. Sharon Smith Lenz. I think she might be at the Dark Shadows convention that's happening in L.A. the first uh weekend in i'm calling it a convention even if they don't because there's going to be a number of surviving cast members there sharon lens played little sarah the ghost oh and then then she was alive when they went back to 19 i mean 1795 and and it was so good <laughs> katina comes on to say i'm going to say good night uh, i'll watch tomorrow see i've got to do earlier shows for you katina i've got to do some uh, what would be the time slot you'd like me to do a show in before you go huh have a great birthday jack so i'm not going to talk to you before that sabrina says my dad's grandmother was a shelton from the shelton gang the Shelton Gang in Wayne County, Illinois. I'm going to have to look that up. Let me write that down. The Shelton Gang. All right. I have to educate myself. What are we talking about? <laughs> well, we haven't gotten to it. We're going to talk about that uh, Elvis song from 1975, uh, Fairy Tale, because people have been emailing me about that. Um, uh, this uh, this week, some people think there's a hidden message there, so we'll, we'll we'll discuss that. Read some lyrics and what have you. Recite some lyrics. Hi, Catherine uh, Gagnon Gagnon. Hi, Jack, uh, a newbie. Happy early birthday. God bless you. Well, thank you, Karen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I began my uh, dating relationship uh, with a Karen. Well, I I actually began my dating relationship with Monique. Monique, I won't say her last name, but uh, she worked at the Ralston Perina Dog Chow Plant in Dunkirk, New York on the 4 to 12, and I was the midnight uh, security guard. Then I was doing radio in the afternoon, but I, I didn't have enough hours on the radio, so I had to be the midnight guy at the Ralston Perina Dog Chow Plant, sometimes Roblin Steel in Dunkirk, and a few other places now and then, but mostly at Ralston Perina. And then when Monique would come out every night after her shift and I'd be there and, you know, as cute as a button. And uh, I, I had never been on a date with a woman. And here I was in my 20s already, something like that. And she did. She would chat and so friendly. And I said, I'd ask you out, but I'm sure you have a have a boyfriend. And she said, yeah, I, I kind of do. And, well, I said, yeah, I, I figured you would. And um, she left. And then the next time she came to the guardhouse, she said she would. She really doesn't have anybody steady at all and that she would like to have dinner with me. Yeah. So uh, that was my first date and my first um, second base, he said, reluctantly. <laughs> But Karen was my first, you know, 
And now, so I started with a Karen seriously, you know, you know what I'm saying, guys and ladies. And then I, now I'm ending with a Karen. Yeah. Um, my dad's grandmother was a Shelton from the Shelton gang, and that's Wayne County, Illinois. I'm going to look that up. I'd uh, write notes down. Golden, Texas, huh? Golden, Texas. My son has got to go close to the border. Um, Rio, Rio, not Rio Grande, Mexico. What am I trying to say? My son's going to be right next to the border doing a delivery. He's a 18 wheeler driver. He's home right now, relaxing in, um, not too far from Austin, Texas. My family lives in Austin, Texas and round rock. Uh, so what are we talking about, Gary? I'll try to get there. <laughs> I'll try to get there. Um, Jake, Judy is here. You are a professional clown. Well, that's part of being a radio disc jockey. I was expected to be amusing. I was expected to be amusing, you know? So uh, it depends on what uh, time of the day I was on the radio as to what kind of amusing I was. <laughs> if it was 2, 3 a.m., I might be a little more, how you say in America, risque than if it was, I was doing the 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift with the bosses listening. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, it was a fun experience. And Charlotte was cool. I, I, I like Charlotte, North Carolina. I used to listen to your big a.m. station there, 1110 out of Charlotte, which is still going strong. Um, Ted Richard says, Jack, tell us your thoughts on why they ended Elvis's, why they ended Elvis professional entertainer life by having him go. Well, I don't believe he did, Ted. It's just that simple. And you know that you know that, um, but I, everything I say is just a possibility. I speak of possibilities and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Sabrina's talking about corned beef meal. Yeah, well, I'll be having that tonight. Um, Karina says, Round Rock isn't far from where I live. Well, cool. I like Round Rock, Texas. Have you uh, been there? Have you had a, a meal at that uh, steak aid place? A stockade, whatever it's called. Steak stockade? <laughs> I don't know. I shopped at the Rosses there uh, in the same mall where Walmart, Walmart is. And now we have a Rosses here in the Hudson Valley that uh, I uh, spent over $100 in uh, the other day as Karen needed her Poco weekend uh, clothes with Mr. Jimmy Stir. I'll be talking about that tonight. Richard, Elvis had a funny sense of humor. He did, right? Had a lot of personality, but it didn't always come out on stage because he was kind of nervous being on stage sometimes. Uh, Cheryl Larson is here. Hi, Cheryl. Um, you're right about that, Gary. I guess we can't argue that he did like, uh, you know, the younger set. Um, Sam Semi, I'll pack up all my things and walk away. You're reading my headline for me. So I'm going to get to that in just a second. I have it written down as well. Bell, Frank Glover. Hi. The uh, Elvis song was called Way Down. Well, I know that song. I used to play it in my disc jockey days. Way down like a tidal wave. Way down. Way on down. It's a great song, isn't it, Frank? The Elvis song was called Way Down, and Elvis predicted his doctor giving him drugs, and he ended up on the floor. <laughs> I'll have to, I haven't heard way down in a while. I'll have to revisit that because I did play that on the radio. Okay. So now we're looking for Elvis songs where he gives a possible clue. Um, but yeah, Sabrina, corned beef and cabbage with the, uh, uh, bo boiled, uh, spuds and the, uh, um, of course the carrots, uh, and, and gotta have some mustard, right? You, some of you don't like mustard. I never understood that. 
Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the deal is I got to work today. Um, if you heard my midnight ramblings, you heard me say that I basically lost most of my hours because my 95 year old gentleman went into the hospital where he still is. So I worked Wednesday and then had to, to, uh, with his daughter, take him to the hospital well into my shift. And, uh, he's going to be there for a while. And, uh, but I'm going to be like a, a hospital sitter, uh, tomorrow and Monday so far, uh, cause he needs help at mealtime. I mean, you know, you know how it is in these hospitals. They, uh, one nurse has like 12 patients or more, eight patients, 12 patients. And the nurse's aides are busy as hell too. They can't sit in the room and feed you. It's really that difficult in many, many areas. If you have a small hospital, that's not a nightmare, count your blessings. The bigger the city, the more time you wait in that waiting room. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, I don't think he took all the pills. They say he took, he didn't take pills. He took injectables as Albert Goldman, uh, said in the book, Elvis, um, he had been injected so many times with these injectable drugs that it was becoming hard to find a piece of skin on his body that had been not been previously uh, stuck. So uh, Dr. Nick tended to give him injectable uh, legal prescription medication that way too much that got him very addicted and caused all kinds of problems. Kitty, I've got your, uh, I've got you. I'm looking at your name right here. Kitty. Kitty, see it? There it is at the top. The last name Hewitt plays a special role in my life as well, but I'll never go into that. Hey, Mr. Jack, praying for all. I'm glad to be here, and we are glad you are here as well, even though you put up those um, overused prayer symbols. And what's the other one? It looks like weights. <laughs> um, my son passed away, says Sabrina, last September. Oh, it's awful. Something you think about every day, I'm sure. I have no idea that kind of pain. Sabrina, I'm very sorry to hear that. My husband found him on the kitchen floor. Don't tell me it was fentanyl. Uh, it's been rough. He was 35 years old, my only son. I'm so sorry, Sabrina. Keep Sabrina in your prayers. Um, people should not uh, have to experience their children dying before them, you know just awful. Uh, life is more interesting when you're able to laugh more. The world can be sad. We just found that out enough. Uh, so why not be a light, be light and have fun while we're here? Well, that's what I've realized about worldwide ramblings. Most people, people, most people, <laughs> most people want to keep it light. They want to keep it light. And uh, Richard's offering you prayers, and he's a good man. He's a good man. So um, I don't know what that means, Gary, about the water. It's, you know, remember, I'm doing this fast because it's coming by pretty fast, 138. And hello, replay uh, crowd. Please, everybody, hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And please hit the like. We got a lot more people watching than we have likes. If you could hit that like, it helps me if you like it. Don't, don't hit it if you don't like it. But hit it if you do. Uh, so I'm so sorry to hear that. Judy Bausch. <laughs> May the Lord continue, uh, give you, may the Lord comfort you as only he can, Sabrina. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, um, it's the, it's the peace of the Holy Spirit that passes all understanding. So there you go, uh, Sharon Lenz. Yeah, everybody reaching out there. So that's really, really good. One hip chick is here with some strange emojis. Let me put on my Dollar Tree specs here. Looks like a lamp from here. I don't know. No, it's a glass of wine. 
I see one hip chick. I tried to convince myself for the longest time that I liked wine, but unless it's really sweet, like something like Manischewitz, I don't much care for it. I've never met a, I've never met a wine or tasted a wine that tasted anywhere near as good as a frozen strawberry daiquiri or a strawberry margarita, for example, something like that. Um, Prayers uh, needed for uh, Brenda's brother, too. I have many issues with my stomach as well. Yes. um. Elo Canella. R.I.P. Elvis, 1935 to 1977. So I guess we know what side of the fence you're on, and that's fine. You know, most people are respectful. Um, When it becomes something else, then people get upset, and uh, then they talk to me, you know. Tim Burris, another one who's emailed me this week. Uh, Yes, ma'am, there will be a glad reunion day. What a day that will be when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all get to heaven. We'll sing and dance in harmony, something like that. It's been a while since I sang that song over at Howell's Church. Howell's Church. 142, Jack. Awesome show. Great job. Hey, look at that. Well, 138 now, but I missed the 142. And um, that's great. That's great. Um, I'm going to do some content here so I could miss people. But if I do miss you, um, I will not announce that name. Patty says, shout the victory. Um, Gary Hill, I am with you, Brother Jack. But you have to understand when you say something like that, Gary with two R's, if I said it uh, 40 seconds ago, I've already forgotten it. It's like, um, it's like Henry Fonda in On Golden Pond. You know, he's uh, struggling with his memory and stuff, and he picks up a book, uh, and uh, he says he's going to go to the lake, I guess, and read. He says, I read it before. I've read it before, but it'll all be new to me. <laughs> it'll all be new to me. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. Uh, I could miss you here. Um, a lot of people, uh, well, not a lot of people, like three people, including Mr. Tim Bur- uh, Burris, told me about uh, Fairy Tale, the uh, a song that Elvis recorded on a country album he did. It was amazing how uh, this man could sing country like he's Conway Twitty or something, like he's been doing it forever. That's how gifted Elvis Presley was, you know. He sings, uh, he does a country album, and it's just, he just knows how to gear his voice to sound like an, a country pro. He was just so uh, gifted when he did things like that, you know. Um, can't see a thing if I don't use the Dollar Tree glasses here. I have to wait to be cool. Wait to be cool. Um... Okay. No, I think we saw Paul pretty much wipe out, didn't we? Paul Walker. Okay. All right. I see we have a troll, but that's part of it, you know, and and I learned to appreciate trolls because uh, they're good for views. I did a short video downtown and um, I said to Karen, because she actually worked the camera. I didn't have to hold the camera in front of me. Um, she uh, she did that. It was about four or five. No, it, was a, it wasn't a short. It was a little longer than a short. But I uh, I noticed that it was picking up views. And by the t- time we got home, which was only a mile and a half away, I had a thousand views. What the heck is going on here? And it was uh, the trolls that were driving it up saying things like, uh, I should ha- get a hairpiece and things like that. 
And uh, it went all the way to 6,000. And then one of the trolls that had been there in the beginning said, well, business is pretty good for you. You're welcome. <laughs> you don't make that much money on, on shorts, though. I don't... I, I don't know if it was a short. It couldn't have been. It was longer than that. So I, I guess I did make some money on that video. I don't know. I don't know. Trolls are always in a chat. Man, we've been pretty fortunate. I don't want to ban, uh, ban a user from the channel. I give them a, a chance first, you know. Um, let's see here. Um, so there's the song Fairy Tale. Um several of you and there's a video that some woman of a certain age uh, has got up that's i guess doing okay uh saying that this is elvis confessing of what he's going to do in the future in other words he is letting us know in this song uh from 1975 what he plans to do in a couple of years from then um and she quotes a few of the lyrics that work and then other lyrics she stays away from I'll pack up my things and walk away. I don't want to hear another word you have to say. Well, right there, Elvis was not rude when he would speak something. You know, if he were to speak about that, he wouldn't say, I don't want to hear another word you have to say. I've been waiting for so long. That fits. I just found out there's something wrong. That doesn't fit. He knew for a long time that he was losing his health, that he was losing his uh, freedom, kind of bound and tied to Graceland. And, uh, you know, it was just a rigorous routine, especially when he was doing movies and what have you, one after another. Um, and nothing will get better. That works. And nothing will get better if I stay. There's no need to explain anymore. I tried my best to love you. This is where it becomes what it really is, folks, which is a song about a guy leaving his uh, significant other, his wife or what have you. You know, I tried my best to love you. Now I'm walking out the door. You use me, you deceive me, and you never seem to need me. But I bet you won't forget me when I'm gone. And as he goes on in the song, he's talking about... Uh, He's obviously talking about a, a love gone sour, a love gone sour. So um, there's a few lines in there you could use. And then now we're going to find like in the song Way Down, there's a song, there's a few uh, lines in there you might be able to use. I'll take another look at that song just for, for the fun of it. Because um, I know it's a sexual song too. All of my resistance is lying on the floor. Elvis sings that. That means, uh, you know, it's party time. All of my resistance is lying on the floor. Good song. Good song. I like it a lot. Um, of course, Elvis did not write songs. There's a few songs he was given a, a, a co-writing credit on, but Colonel Parker worked that out somehow. He did not write songs. Ben Weissman wrote over 50 Elvis songs, many for the Elvis movies. So, um, you know, not, uh, not the really, uh, good ones. Um, he wrote, uh, songs like rock a hula for blue Hawaii, but I'll have to check and see what else that Ben Weissman wrote for, uh, Elvis Presley, Mark James. Mark James uh, wrote uh, Suspicious Minds for Elvis. Elvis would record a total of five singles written by Mark, Suspicious Minds, Always on My Mind, which was the Willie Nelson song. That's a terrific song, Mark James. Oh, and it was perfect uh, when Elvis sang it. He was singing it to Priscilla. He, he held the microphone. No, somebody didn't hold it for him this time. He held the microphone in the recording studio with his left hand, and he sang Always On My Mind and sang it beautifully. And it was a song for Priscilla saying, I know I didn't pay enough attention to you. I know I didn't fe make you feel special. Boy, I've had this experience. I've had this experience. It's Only Love, Raised on Rock, and Moody Blue. Moody Blue was kind of a, 
a mild hit for Elvis. It, it charted. It might have made the top 20. Not one of his bigger hits, but certainly it's a good song, decent song. But Suspicious Minds and Always On My Mind, those are classic songs. So Mark James wrote a bunch of songs he did, probably for other people as well. So I don't see it in fairy tale. You know, I don't see it there. Sometimes we want things to fit. People accuse me of that sometimes. But, um, you know, when you get to over 60 coincidences, and yes, I don't really believe in coincidences. When you get to 60 things that, uh, that are, uh, that are, uh, causing smoke to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When I'm saying permeate, waft, waft, that word, uh, you might think there might be some actual fire when you get to that number, you know, when you get to that number. Elvis sang Moody Blue live in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina in February 77. How do you know that, Lee? How do you know that, my traveling tiger? Um, yeah, I know where the stadium was there. I mean, I know I know where he probably played the indoor was indoor right a lot of the southern uh places have a dome because it's two things happen as you get down south it rains a lot especially in florida for like 15 20 minutes and then it's beautifully sunny and hot all over again and uh uh also uh so ilio um, you are entitled to your opinion and, uh, you're not going to convince anybody here just like it, you know, in the, uh, in the regular videos. So, um, I respect your opinion, respect other people's opinions. Okay. Can you do that for me? Um, I remember my brother gave me all his Elvis albums and I play them all the time on my record player. I certainly do remember we had the record players and uh, having to go buy a new needle. So interesting conversation there. Henley, Henry, Shirley Chambers is here. Where is Shirley Chambers? I'm not sure I know. Hey, Adam, by the way, what's going on with you? How have you been? I think you had some health issues, too. Elvis sang this song at his last CBS special. It's hard, uh, One Hip Check. I can miss a question because, um, you know, it's, it's going pretty fast. So we'll ask your question again, because I don't see it. Oh, uh, Sling Blade Jeff is here. You like those French fried taters? You like those French taters? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The great uh, Billy Bob Thornton, right? Sometimes I confuse Billy Bob Thornton with the man who played, uh, <laughs> who played on... Uh, the, the movie actor who started out on Cheers. I confuse those two actors sometimes. Um, how are you? Were you from Sling Blade Jeff? Where are you watching us from? Downtown William Brown is here from Nacogdoches, Texas. Hello. How are you, William Brown? 134 watching right now. Please hit the subscribe and like button haven't subscribed already please hit the like button if you haven't and uh hit the notification bell so you'll know when we come on because we uh, are planning you know to do some odd time videos maybe slots i have never done i don't play the slots because i always lose hi Flo. well hello i like your little uh, ghost emoji there i guess welcome Flo from the uh, supremes marianne rossi not uh not uh, Donna Rossi. Got to go, Jack. Happy birthday. Okay, uh, Marianne Rossi. Don't forget, after we do these shows, they are immediately available on the uh, replay section. 
the live section of this channel, the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned. I notice sometimes when I go to watch the replay to see if it's okay, you know, some of it, <laughs> a little of it, uh, it, uh, it takes a while before it starts to sync. You'll hear the audio, you'll see my face, but uh, the, the video is somewhat frozen in the beginning. I have heard that, Gary, that Elvis signed his uh, death certificate. Yes, I have heard that. Have I ever heard that one? Here's somebody else new. <laughs> uh, Wadzim Pret. If Elvis is alive, he'll vote for Trump 24. You know he will. He absolutely will, and I will as well, you know. Um, Mr. Biden, I'm not doing three minutes of politics today. You know, I don't want to bring things down. Um, but um, um, I think I would ra rather uh, vote for um, the guy who cleans the grease trap at McDonald's than Joseph R. Biden. Joseph R. Biden. Traveling uh, Tiger says, I have researched over 800 concerts. He attempted Moody Blue, uh, I think, on the uh, 20th and then uh, did a complete version on the 21st, if my memory is correct. Also visited the auditorium in Charlotte, huh? Yeah, I never was in the auditorium. Um, we did a gig somewhere there, and we, we visited there. Um, but... Um, there were other places of North Carolina where we worked more. Julie says Moody Blue is probably my least favorite of his chart hits. I could probably say the same thing. Uh, it's not certainly one of my top favorites. Um, Oh, Richard, isn't it sad, though, about this Fonny and this? I have a video up on uh, the whole Fonny Willis thing. It's actually uh, only a minute and six seconds, you know. I was trying to make it a short, but I I, I blew it by seven seconds. <laughs> um, you know, this judge who looks like Prince William McAfee, McPhee or something, whatever his name is, uh, he had a chance to make a ruling that would have helped America by you, you can't say that you believe she was unprofessional and that there were, that you agree there were things in there that were very shady and wrong. She was wrong to do this, wrong to do that. And then let her continue on, you know, to prosecute the, uh, the 45th president of the United States. America's on the line here. Your decision, Judge, will affect your children and your grandchildren if things go really south, if they go really south. And I don't mean south where Richard is, but I mean south into the commode, you know. So uh, when someone is rude to you and ignores you and keeps talking, comes on with this attitude, and and and, and two different people testified that the, the, the that they they know for a fact the relationship um, started way before she sang. So that means she committed perjury on the stand. And you because because why? Because in two weeks you are up for election, and and uh, you knew. It seems this is a possibility. I speak of possibilities. I could be wrong. Uh, you knew that if you didn't rule that way, you could be thrown out in two weeks. You could lose the election. Uh, this this is a bad thing about judges having to um, to um, to um, keep running for re-election. You know, so it's just terrible. But. Um, uh, there's a lot of good things he did. Uh, he did eliminate uh, six charges, three for Trump. So uh, the the Supreme Court should come through. And, you know, even though he's surrounded by all kinds of evil, I think uh, Donald Trump uh, will be victorious because more and more people every day are saying Democrats are saying they, they cannot vote for Joe Biden. They have figured it out that he is the worst president in the history of America, certainly in my lifetime. And that's all. I'm not going to 
go any further than that because people want to keep it light. My mom is the same age as Elvis, says Sabrina. Her dad, Sabrina, her dad would never let her watch him on TV at his house. Hmm. Um, well, hi, Kevin, with a, with a second E. All righty. God always wins. Well, that's true. That's true. So um, do not fear. Um, trying to think of the specific, uh, the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. Kitty is talking to Shell, tra- uh, campaign manager for Donald Trump, but in the country of Canada. Sam, Sammy, Richard, you met Willina? You did meet Willina, didn't you, uh, Richard? Richard. Palm Springs, huh? For uh, Trump, 2024. So um, do you live uh, near where Alan Hamill lives? Um, Pret? That's easier to pronounce. Pret? Um where Suzanne Summers used to live. They live in Palm Springs, I believe. My partner, she loves to get the uh, Suzanne Summers prop, uh, products, including the Gut Renew. No, it's Kevin with a second E, Gary. <laughs> ah, yes, in 2022, along with Bob E, E, your cousin Bruce. Your cousin Bruce, he was on the radio tonight at 88 years old, WABC Radio. Hmm. Just looking at your comments. President Trump mentioned Elvis today. He did, huh? At the uh, 4 o'clock rally, right? I saw that they were having one, but I was out with Karen doing those errands, you know? I saw that Newsmax gave me an alert that he had a 4 o'clock rally, and I could have watched it on Newsmax 2. I don't have Newsmax 1, so I can't watch my uh, couple of my favorite shows until I subscribe. But there's really only one or two that I would want to see, and it feels funny to subscribe just for that. I don't know how they're doing behind a payroll, but I have an idea that they lost a significant um, significant amount of their audience. Uh, Rob, Rob, that's who I like. It's 7 o'clock East Coast time. Rapture waiting. Well, we're not supposed to wait. We're supposed to be busy doing the Lord's work. I take it you're a pre-tribber, huh, Gary? You're a pre-tribber? I don't know. I'm a I don't know her. I would if I would guess I would go with the mid-trib, but you know, I know that uh Jack Van Impey talked about this all the time. I'm sure he was a pre-tribber. He was a pre-tribber, wasn't he, Jack Van Impey? Mm-hmm. Oh, Elvis wants a pardon. Here's someone new (laughs) from a president. He won't get one from Joseph R. Biden. That's for sure. He might get one from the Supreme Court, though. Talk to me. Where are you from? Talk to me. Where are you watching us uh, today? Um, Yeah, 141 watching right now. Hi, everybody. I better get some content in. I don't know. I have a new video up where um, I talk about the scammers. Make sure you watch that, please. Uh, Like it if you like it. And share. Share these videos where you can share them. I would really appreciate that. The live shows are too long to share. Sometimes we go two hours. I'm not saying we will tonight. But um, sometimes we do. Uh, but share the shorter ones, like my 15-minute videos, if you can. That would be appreciated. Hi, uh, Laura Shadley. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Karen is still with us. And uh, it's okay, Brenda Noyce. We all see different things. Yes, we all see different things. Nobody has to believe in anything here. You know, nobody has to believe anything. Um. What else? What else? What else? Okay. 
<laughs> I knew I had more. Uh, Kitty Hewitt. Um, you know, we were talking about um, the fact that uh, you, you guys pointed this out to me, that there was no music service loaded for the, uh, the, um, the 310 24 service. I believe that's still correct, right? They did not load the music service for last week at Household of Faith. And of course, as I say in my latest video where we talk about the scammers, someone pretending to be Bob Joyce, uh, we said that um, um, in relation to uh, the music service, the way we would think about it is something must have something real special must have happened at the 310 music service, either that or something disastrous, you know, uh, cause they didn't load it. But of course the way we thought about it was that, uh, you know, somebody real special showed up at the music service last week. So if any of you attended the music service, you don't have to identify yourself. You can email me at Jack, the fair guy, F A I R Jack, the fair guy at gmail.com. And uh, if you want to comment on that, please do uh what i liked what kitty uh speculated on is she said she saw a sax on the seashed stage but it's really an altar did uh she saw a uh, sax on the altar so i thought that was very uh observant uh kitty so i looked that up who could it be now uh, Clarence Clemens from the Bruce Springsteen band is dead. Uh, Billy Joel's saxophonist. I should know his name and I don't. Uh, he's still playing sax for a Billy Joel. That would be great. But uh, why would he be there? You know, well, I, I just answered my own question why he would be there. Uh, James Sexton played uh, sax for Elvis uh, Presley. Uh, on stage, he did James Sexton. I don't know if he's still alive. Somebody could look that up. Saxophonist James Sexton. Uh, Jim Spake of Local 71. I love that. Uh, Elvis using union musicians. He played tenor sax and he played the opening of uh, If If I Can Dream. Or I should say of I Can Dream. He played the opening of that song, Jim Spake. Um, Boots Randolph was the first ever to play on uh, multiple eight uh, recordings with Elvis Presley. Boots Randolph was a saxophonist uh, legend with his own hit. His biggest hit was uh, Yakety Sax. Uh, and the only one to ever uh, play. Now I got to read my own writing. <sighs> solo. That's the word solo. To ever play solo with him. Plus, he played on the soundtracks of eight Elvis movies. Boots Randolph uh, also went on tour with Mr. Jimmy Stir playing saxophone for Jimmy for a long time. And before he passed away, when he was sick, he gave Jimmy Stir, he gave Jimmy Stir all of his arrangements for various songs. Jimmy has them. He has that from several artists, uh, the Jimmy Stir Orchestra. Um, he always pays tribute to Boots Randolph, who uh, played sax most frequently for Elvis Presley. And then comes Jim Spake, and James Sexton, the saxophonist that we know of for Elvis Presley. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe somebody does know. Someone will tell me this week, maybe watching the replay, what happened at the uh, praise and worship last Sunday. Hopefully, most importantly, they were praising the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind. That always uh, is the way to go. Shelly's got the shamrocks going. Yes, happy St. Patty's Day, everyone. It is officially in the East Coast, anyway, of, of uh, America. It is St. Patrick's Day 2024. They had the parades on Saturday for the most part. I think that's true in, in most places. They had the parades on Saturday in New York City and, and many other places. Um. So 
Stefan is still with us. Good night, Brenda. Good night, everyone. Have to go next door. Check out my brother, Clay. Uh, ben Bed got, got to cook my butt off tomorrow. Bless you all. Karen will be cooking while I play um, play uh, hospital sitter at uh, our local hospital for three hours. And I'll come home about 730 and have me some corned beef and cabbage, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe even a, a little uh, soda bread. I will. Steven Spielich is still with us. Judy uh, Bausch is talking about child uh, trafficking. Several people died who were involved in promoting uh, awareness of child trafficking. Traffic, trafficking, I can say that word. Um, I found the gold right here on your channel. Well, amen, Kevin. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm actually running out of things. This almost never happens, but I'm running out of things to say because I want to keep it light. You know, I don't want to. Um, yes, Richard, use that Irish spring today. Make sure you do. And, uh, so I'm very happy to hear about your new condo, but I just hope your neighbors are cool. I mean, there's so many things that can happen in a condo situation, Richard. You should have checked with me first. <clears throat> if you have a numbered parking spot, for example, oh, that can lead to riots. If, they're, if they have any common sense at all, they do not number the parking spaces because someone will come into the parking lot and someone will be parked in their numbered spot and all hell will break loose. I've seen this happen. I've seen the police have to be called and what have you. Uh, they will block that person in and they'll refuse to move. That could lead to them backing into that person in a fit of rage. Oh, Richard. Don't uh, and then what if the local kids are are, are he leaning on your vehicle and stuff like that? What if they are lousy neighbors? What if they're playing rap, Richard? Then what do you do? You know, I know the walls are usually pretty good in these condos, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's things that can happen. I'm worried for you now, Richard. How many bedrooms though? Will there be a spare for me? <laughs> That's important, Richard. Lynn Redgrave is here. Now, she passed on, but this is Lynn R. Hey, from California. Well, welcome to beautiful California with one of the um, worst DAs and even a worse governor that uh, that we have. But there's so many bad governors. So, hey, could Gavin Newsom become at the Democratic Convention? Could he switch places and become the uh the Democratic pick for the next president of the United States. I don't think it's too far-fetched. I don't think it's too far-fetched. Even though uh, Biden clinched the nomination, he could be convinced that he is just too uh, much in cognitive decline to do it, and he could step aside. They don't want Kamala. She's a heartbeat away. That ought to scare the heck out of you. Huh. I hope not too, Lynn Redgrave. <laughs> I just want to call you that. I don't know why. Um, <sighs> hmm. So what part of California do you live in? I, uh, I uh, In 1979, people are tired of me talking about this. I uh, lived in Hollywood for a year, right around the corner from Capitol Records. I said I'm going to stay because I had visited back and forth on a Greyhound bus in my youth. I'm going to stay for a year and get it out of my system. I'm going to get it out of my system. Margaret is here under the name uh, Belinda Lemon. What did I miss and how much did I miss? You missed a lot, so you must watch the replay. Anybody tuning in now, much watch the replay of, uh, of uh, this particular uh, edition of Worldwide Ramblings. I am going to try different time slots. Uh, not that I'm abandon abandoning Saturday nights. I'm not. Two bed and two bath. Two full baths, uh, Richard? Yes, not not one and a half now, right? Yeah, you got to have a two full baths. Good. 
Good. And uh, are you um, are you going to miss where you're living now? You're going to miss it? Are you going accustomed to it? I mean, you won't be as close to Mar-a-Lago or Sean Hannity's house either anymore, Richard, but obviously not that far. Remember to wear green. Uh, I don't have much green uh, now that you mention it. I used to have green shorts. I still do. Don't I? <laughs> I have like 15, 16 pairs of shorts, you know. Just got a pair of black uh, cargo shorts when I already have, you know, a few. But I got them. They are, they are, they are the Amazon Prime uh, personal brand of cargo shorts, 100% cotton. And um, I got them uh, this past week. Yeah, I did. Uh, Richard says only one mile to Sean's house. I don't know anybody named S H A W N S or S H A W N. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's so many ways to spell Sean, you know, Sean Cassidy would spell it S H A U N Sean Hannity would spell it S E A N. As um, then there's Sean Young. I think she's S E A N. A lot of ways to spell that name. Robin Roman says I sent Pastor Bob Joyce and Walina a very personal email recently to his personal email, but I hope he reads it. I would love to hear from him, but I don't expect a response. If you mention the E word. He will totally ignore that, and he will just wish you the blessing. I've seen this happen. I've seen an example of this. He will wish you God's blessing in your life, and he will ignore anything you try to infer about Elvis Presley. Um, and I'm not even sure if that's not staff, you know, but they don't. They are really making it clear that Pastor Bob doesn't answer uh he doesn't do direct messages or anything like that. We talk about that in our uh, latest video. This is what's uh, on the website as of late. We have heard multiple people this week say they have been talking to Pastor Bob Joyce online. And in bold type, no, you haven't. This is Household of Faith. Pastor Bob does not have private conversations online through direct messages or private messages of any kind. Anyone who has contacted you as Bob Joyce is pretending to be Bob Joyce. They are always scammers interested in talking about banking or giving some kind of financial advice. They are not Bob Joyce. You are the target for a scam to take your money. Your love gives me such a thrill, but your love won't pay my bills. I need money, honey. One hip chick. Yeah, you just never know, do you, one hip chick? Um, hello, Doug. Doug Barlow. Did you ever buy? Did you ever buy Bob Joyce's music? Are you talking to me? Let's well, see. I have Spotify, and it's all there. So it would be, you know. And of course, they would rather you buy a physical CD. I have Spotify Premium, so anytime I play a Bob Joyce song, he gets <laughs> twenty cents or whatever per hit. You know, whatever it is. Uh, so I don't buy much music anymore because I have, I have Spotify, you know, and the artists are compensated when I play a song, but YouTube won't let me do it without a music license, which would wipe out what we make here on YouTube. And then it would be only good for three countries. And I don't know if, um, if, um, traveling tiger could see it down in Wales, uh, South Africa couldn't, and Ireland, uh, I'm not sure, uh, maybe Ireland, 
and uh, other places that check in here, like New Zealand, it would, the, the whole show would be completely blocked. So what, what can I tell you? You know, what can I tell you? Um, you like Hannity, huh, Sabrina? Yeah, he's been doing this for a long time since the uh, either the late 80s or the very beginning of the 90s on the radio and then eventually went to TV with uh, somebody I like very much, the late, great Alan Combs. They don't make liberals like Alan Combs anymore, a fine, decent man. Hannity thought so as well. He cried when he passed away. I cried when he passed away. I listened to Alan Combs on the radio for years here in New York, and then he went national, and he was terrific. One of the few liberals to ever succeed in talk radio. They all fall down. People don't like them, including Al Franken and, and the rest. Sling Blade Jeff. Yes, right neater. Well, the song is Welcome to My World, and Elvis Presley sang that a lot, but did he change the lyrics? Because the name of the sermon was Welcome to His World, so maybe he did do that. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to check out that sermon. I missed it. Um, who did you first see on Fox, Sabrina? Oh, uh, yeah, you mean Sean Hannity? Yes, yes. Well, it was uh, Hannity and Combs at first, and then uh, Alan had had enough and uh, decided he was doing Fox Radio at that point as well. Uh, late night, loved it. I would listen to him from 10 p.m. to, I don't know, 1 a.m., I guess. And um, then he had enough of Sean Hannity. They were friends, but uh, he, he did the show for many years, and then wanted to back away from it. Mark Trevor is here. Hello, Mark Trevor. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, sorry about your mom. Yes, I know that Traveling Tiger's uh, mom passed away a while back, and his dad is, uh, is getting uh, care. So um, that's what happens, right? You hit a certain age. Mark says Elvis is alive. What are you, one of these conspiracy theorists there, Mark? You know, next you're going to tell me JFK Jr. is alive. Somebody's going to say amen to that. I should have kept me mouth shut. I got to learn to keep me mouth shut. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, otherwise it will. I will be deluged with uh, everybody that you like that died is now still alive because they faked their death. It was interesting. Now, I, I'm not a football fan. Is it Adrian Rogers or Aaron Rodgers? I'm blanking here. Uh, the possible choice, unless something happened today I didn't hear about. RFK Jr. is down to two people. Somebody help me. Is it Adrian or Aaron? Come on, Richard. Help me. Help me, Richard. Help me. Um, is it Adrian Rogers, Richard? Anyway, uh, it's either him or Jesse Ventura. I said this on Midnight Ramblings um, Friday morning. It wasn't this morning. It was Friday morning. And uh, Jesse Ventura, is uh, he was the, a governor, so he's had some experience. Uh, but in terms of having a star quarterback be your pick, uh, because he speaks well, this we're talking about the president of the United States here. We're talking about the president of the United States. Uh, and uh, you want someone who's uh, experienced, someone that that, uh, that has had some government experience. In my lifetime, there's only been one man that had zero experience in politics that went on to do pretty well. And we all know that is, Donald John Trump, Donald John Trump. Um, and he was rough in the first six months, but he picked it up fast. And then he used his business knowledge to, uh, to do, to get a lot of things done, a lot of things done. And now we live in the, in an America where if they don't agree with you, they try to crucify you. So we're hoping that, uh, that he gets through all those hurdles because as DeSantis said, if we lose this time, it could be the uh, 
time to call in the dogs and pee on the fire. You know, we may not get a mulligan. Now, I don't play golf, Richard, but uh, I'm sure a, a, a mulligan is something that uh, golfers like, right, when they get a mulligan. What about a mulligan stew? I don't even know what's in a mulligan stew. Hmm. <laughs> was this a lie, but he doesn't want to be bothered. Well, it depends on who you feel Elvis is. Um, if he should be the pastor from Benton, Arkansas, as I have said many times to people that tell me, leave him alone and all that. Well, two things I say. First thing I say is that when I began doing the Bob Joyce topic in 2018, I said if the pastor was displeased with my work, that all he had to do was video message me on Facebook Messenger so I knew who I was talking to and ask me to take them down, and I would take the videos down. Well, six years, seven years later, that call has never come, and I'm about to rescind it. Because rescind it. I rescind it. Return to sender address unknown. And the other thing is, in 2011, Bob Joyce began an international media ministry on this very format right here that I am so uh, thankful for, YouTube. He began an international ministry. He left, if he was in the witness protection program, he left it, went back to regular bodyguards. About 40, 50 percent of you tell me you see bodyguards and the others uh, indicate that you really don't. And then I hear somebody say they they interview people and are you here to protect uh, are you here to protect Pastor Joyce and he's the man said eh, you could say that you could say that but then there's that other story that somebody told me where um, you know this guy was not cool he was not cool and would eventually be escorted out by a couple of men. <laughs> Uh, he uh, he walked up to this man he perceived to be a bodyguard and said, uh, it must be really cool protecting Elvis. And the bodyguard uh, looked at him, and, and this may be a totally fake story. I speak of possibilities. I could be wrong. This could be a bogus story. Uh, it seems sincere at the time, but it's not one of my reliable sources, so to speak. Uh, and the, the bodyguard said, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Then he thought about what he just said, and a look of horror came on his face. And before you know it, this guy was being escorted out the door. Don't go in there and mention the E-word, Bren. Don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. Blessing everyone from New Mexico. Hi, Janet Williams. How are you? New Mexico again. Yes, I remember you. I do, I do, I do. Well, I know Almighty God never loses. Uh, I, 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 that's what I. That's what I will go to my uh, blast furnace with. That may seem strange for me to put it that way, Kevin, but I don't want to rot in the ground. So I'll be choosing. Uh, I'll be choosing to throw myself into a blast furnace because, as a, as a pastor said, when there was this controversy about uh, you know about. Uh, not being buried in the ground, but being cremated. He said, it's, we're all turning to dust. When you get cremated, it just, it just makes the process faster. It makes it faster. It's, it's not a sin. That was his interpretation, a really good teacher too. So that's my, my method. I mean, I, I don't want to be under the ground. I won't be able to breathe in that casket, you know? <laughs> they used to put bells in caskets in case they made a mistake. You could ring the bell, but if nobody was around, then what do you do, Doug Barlow? What do you do then? Bob Joyce was Elvis, but had, but had, Bob Joyce was Elvis, but had, I hope it's past tense, had to be saved. Well, we don't know when uh, Elvis Presley, uh, you probably mean saved from his uh, sickness and saved from, uh, is the fact that he was trapped at Graceland, maybe you mean that. In terms of when uh, Elvis uh, accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior, we don't know that date. Only God knows that date. Uh, oh, well, he recorded gospel albums early. Doesn't mean anything. Many people have. 
many people, even Barbara Streisand has recorded Christmas songs singing about Jesus. You know, I don't know that she believes in him. It would be great if she did. Maybe it would make her a nicer person. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we don't know when that happened, because if you remember during the Larry Geller years, who was Elvis's hairstyle stylist, Elvis was into Eastern religion. He was chasing gurus. He was listening to what Larry Geller had to say. And you can't uh, you can't square what uh, you can't square what Larry Geller was saying with scripture. You just can't. It's as I've said before, it's like hot fudge and tomato sauce trying to mix them together. Uh, you can't do that. You can't do that. So um, I don't know when Elvis came to the Lord Jesus Christ, but I don't think it's as early as a lot of people would think. Uh, I don't think so. Well, um, I think that's a lazy statement, Mark. You know, I, he doesn't want to be, but like I, I, first of all, when people say, like I said, that means they've said it in a thread many times before. It's a lookout because they're coming on to say the same thing over and over. That's my, when I see, like I said, it, you know, um, when you make a point, you've got to say, you've got to have a foundation for it. You've got to say more than, like I said, he doesn't want to be bothered. You don't know what's going on in his mind, in his head. You can point to certain things he said. Well, you know, remember he said this. Okay, you're building a foundation to it. You're building a foundation. But when you do, a, a, you know, a, a worldwide media ministry on YouTube, that indicates uh, you do want to be bothered. You do want to be bothered. Hi, Randy, under the name Tammy Biggerstaff. Good evening, Brother Jack. Good evening to you, Randy. I've been hearing from you in the email. And let me just uh, take a, a look at the a gander here at the email. Oh, things lit up. We have heard from Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Um, what did you, um, let me see. Look at your images I have already. Oh, yes, there's Margaret on the on the kayak. I guess that's a kayak. Hi, Margaret. Looking good there. Looking good. Very nice. Very nice. I don't show pictures unless you can see them in my glasses, of course. That's always a possibility. I don't show them unless you tell me uh, to. Tim Burris wrote to me about that fairy tale song that we've covered. Um, yeah, Randy, you talked to me about Spa Guy. Um. I don't want to read something I didn't ask permission for, but you certainly uh, were wondering about the validity of the uh, spa guy encounter. Was it uh, orchestrated? I don't see why it would be orchestrated, but uh, there are people that swear, swear, <laughs> people that swear in the early days of Household of Faith, I guess when he used to preach in this church that had uh, uh, big rocks as the wall behind him, that uh, Spa Guy was a member of Household of Faith then. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I may have something more to say about that. I was thinking about it, the Spa Guy, but not not right now. Am I prepared to, uh, am I prepared to do so? But I agree with you, Randy, that... Uh, that uh, it's unlikely that Spa Guy would have been so naive that he thought he was going to get a world exclusive from uh, Pastor Bob Joyce. And, of course, I have a video up here on Spa Guy. Did, uh, did Spa Guy speak to the other Bob Joyce? Please watch that. Please watch that. Lots from Susan Safati talking about all kinds of things here. Um. She found Michael Savage, one of my favorites, on uh, YouTube. I watch him every weekend. He does a lot on the weekend. He's 80, 81 years old now. 81 going on 82, I guess. She liked his video, We Never Know When We're Going to Die. Watch that video. I did. We Never Know When We're Going to Die. Michael Savage from his San Francisco house, radio legend that's now retired, but he does a podcast. And uh, he does, um, you know, he has his YouTube channel and he's on a few other platforms as well. So um, Jack Savage is based on Michael Savage. And you'll see two Jack Savage videos here. 
If they get more hits, I might do another one. I might do another one. So watch the Jack Savage videos. Um, and she was uh, referring us to the One Pair of Hands by Elvis Presley on YouTube. Haven't um, haven't listened to that yet. There's just only so many hours in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know they'll block it, so I don't want to uh, to go down that route, you know. Now I'm, uh, oh, that kind of paddle. See, my mind went to the wrong place, Kevin, with two E's. When you said, should I grab a paddle? I thought you were going all 50 shades of gray on me or something. See, that's just the flesh. It just doesn't want to quit. Um, yeah, well, you don't want to be up the creek without a paddle, Kevin. You know that. So always have a paddle ready, either because you're going to uh, need it to uh, move your boat along in the water or um, somebody's been naughty. Oh, boy, the f- the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, it's worse than that, Kevin. It's it's a it's a sense of humor that is geared. See, it's all my years as a radio DJ too. I'll use that excuse as a backup. Uh, you know where I was I was prone to find something a little naughty on the air sometimes. You know, like uh, foreigner feels like the first time, hurts like hell. <laughs> that was something I would only do at like two o'clock in the morning. God, the Son, Jesus Christ, saves. Perfect for me to say that now and remind me of where my mind should be. How are you? How are you? Welcome. Felipe Sauve Sauve is here. Anyone here visited Pastor Bob's church? Oh, yes, there's been a few, like Richard the Lionhearted. If so, what's it like? Well, you tell him, guys. We have talked about that in one of our live shows not too long ago. And there's Richard doing his job, just as he said he would do. See? Very, very good. I'm so thankful you're spending um, this much time with me on your Saturday night. There's many other things you could be doing. Um, Well, Lynn R. did Pastor Bob preach at Lisa Marie's funeral. Um, I have two videos up on that. One where I mentioned Elvis and one where I preach of when I, when I mentioned, uh, did Bob, uh, did Bob Joyce preach Lisa Marie's funeral, something like that. Both of those videos are very successful for me. Very successful for me usually means over a hundred thousand views. I don't get million views, you know, cause I don't do that fancy editing. I'm going to have to do more. Um, oh, I'm blocking Karen and I, there she is, right there. <laughs> That's one of the first pictures ever taken of us. Not the first one. The first pictures were at the Renaissance Fair in Tuxedo, New York. Um, but um, I was given a, uh, a funeral card uh, for the funeral, not the public ceremony. Pastor Bob Joyce was not at the public uh, uh, memorial for Lisa Marie Presley. He preached opposite it. It was Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, and he was in Benton. He was not the tall white guy helping uh, Priscilla or getting off a plane. He, that guy was tall and lanky, but anybody with silver hair and a beard and mustache, oh, there he is. There's Pastor Bob. But no, no, no. Um The private funeral may have happened on the 28th of uh, January. And uh, so I was given a card early on that had the order of service. Watch the videos. You'll see this and you'll see that card eventually, especially in the one that mentions Elvis. Because for a long time, I thought it's a bridge too far. I'm not going to go there. I'm I'm just going to hold this back. I'm not going to show this funeral card that says that the eulogy was... uh, was preached by Pastor Bob Joyce, and 
who also sang a song, or he, if he didn't sing, he uh, he prayed and what have you. Austin Butler sang a song. Tom Presley, you can find him here on YouTube. Tom Presley sang several songs, supposedly at the uh, private funeral. But I cannot uh, I cannot uh, say that the uh, the service card for the private funeral is authentic. I can only say that TMZ reported that it was going to be happening, and it was a very private affair where um, you could not bring in any kind of a recording device. You had to sign an NDA at the private funeral non-disclosure agreement. This is according to TMZ. You could not talk about what you saw, what you heard. You couldn't say anything about it. Non-disclosure agreement there. So there is that. Um, there's no pictures that I know of of the private funeral. I'm sure there was a house video, which would be kept private, uh, but it wasn't like the public memorial. So I speak of possibilities. I could be wrong. Um, I cannot uh, authenticate the uh, the information I was giving. I didn't put it up until other people started mailing it to me and stuff much later on, and then other people were putting it up. So I said, well... Uh, the point is moot now, and then I put it up for the first time. But uh, it's hard to see. It, it's a very small print, but I read you the order of service. I think that's in the um, the, the uh, Did Elvis Preach Lisa Marie's uh, Private Funeral, or however I worded the video title. I forget after a while because I've got so many videos. Uh, we're talking about Ray Stone, who has the uh, Elvis Alive as Bob Joyce group, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, seems like a fine man. Yeah, Richard Lyon, people was telling me, people were telling me that Pastor Bob Joyce has the Sharpies ready to autograph his CDs after the service and pictures, and then he'll take a picture with you and, uh, uh, you can get a hug if you want one and what have you. Uh, he spends a lot of time doing that. <laughs> Shell, I can always count on you to say something extraordinary. Extraordinary. I had a Presley in my ancestry way. Back in the 1700s, I think, on my mom's side of the family. Um, yeah, I never thought of that, Richard, comparing signatures, comparing Bob's signature with Elvis. I never thought of that. Yes, don't treat him like a celebrity when you go there. Um, don't try to be slick. <laughs> don't try to be slick. How many people are going to um, Hot Springs, Arkansas on August 11th? Pastor Bob will move uh, the uh, Sunday service to the convention hall in Hot Springs. It's a two-day event. Saturday, there'll be speakers like Amanda Grace. Uh, Gene Ho himself will uh, preach. I always forget the the other gentleman. I gotta, I'll, have it, I'll have it written down next time. And uh, Kim Clement's daughter, who calls herself Clement, but that then she has a married name. Um, she's going to be there, and that's a ticketed event. So go to georgemagazine.com, and you'll be able to find out all about it. There's three levels of uh, ticketing for that uh, day, Saturday, the 10th of August. Uh, one is a VIP uh, with, you know, all kinds of perks. But also you have to find a place to stay. They recommend places to stay either in Benton or in Hot Springs. And um, there's supposedly a lot of things to do in Hot Springs, including an amusement park, you know. So stay a week. Margaret loves to spread a, a love around. That's Belinda Lemon. And... Um, Felipe says, if I was to fly from the west to Benton, 
<coughs> excuse me, on a Sunday, what are the chances I would get into the church to see Pastor Bob? Well, you know, the, the, the nicer the weather gets, the more visitors there will be. They have international visitors to um, Household of Faith. They do. Um, and sometimes uh, you get there late, especially, but uh, they have to let the regulars in. You know, they come every week. Uh, there's only about 100 seats. There's been talk of them uh, looking for a, a sanctuary with more space. Maybe not have to build it, but find something that's already up that they could rent, you know, what have you. Because uh, sometimes you end up in the, uh, the fellowship hall watching on closed circuit TV. That could happen. It has happened to people, and the church has announced that it has happened to people. So, you know, um, it's not 100%. Not when you have like 100 seats, it's not. No, no, no. Everybody blessing uh, Lee. That's Traveling Tiger. Amen. I will shake my emotions off, LOL. I am sure Jack would prefer my input upon the show. Well, um, you know, losing a loved one is a serious, uh, serious thing. I lost my mom in 2001. Um, she was in her 70s. And I lost my dad when I was 11 years old, um, 1967. Probably of the same thing I have, cardiomyopathy, but he didn't have the access to things that I have. So there you go. Well, still 119 watching. Very, very good. So, yeah, I'm going to do the hospital gig from 4 to 7 uh, today. And then tomorrow, a little longer shift, I think, something like maybe 3 to 7. And uh, we'll see from there. Janet Williams talking to Sabrina. Ted Richards. How hot is it in Benton in August? Hot. <laughs> hot. <laughs> it got hot here last August here in New York. I mean, really hot. You know, not quite as hot as I know in Texas, it was 108, 109 degrees for many days in the summer, you know, many days. And that's the next state over. That's the next state over. Hi, guys, Sutherland. So Elvis is still alive as Bob Joyce. Let me check. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm still with us, Guy Williams. <laughs> no, you're, you're uh, the son of, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> he has kids, right? Yeah. Um, we speak of possibilities. We could be wrong. I see uh, new people are coming on as I'm getting ready to close it out. Seems that it's always that way, doesn't it? Hearts Wild for you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Hearts Wild. I did a Midnight Ramblings the other night till like, I don't know, 1.30 in the morning, but you didn't come on. Um, but welcome hearts wild and welcome guy Sutherland. Yeah. This is worldwide ramblings. You can watch the replay. Please hit the subscribe and like button. If you haven't already, I'd love it to see it go to, um, what is it? 6,900. And then we're only a hundred away from hitting 7,000. It's been going faster than normal for the uh, subscription, so please keep that going. Please hit the like and hit the notification bell. I'm going to be doing odd hours live shows, not this long, <laughs> but odd hours. And if it doesn't work, I'll say goodbye pretty quick, but we'll try it. We'll try it. And, of course, the replay crowd is always the biggest, the biggest. If we have a show that goes two, 3,000 views, it's on in the replay, of course. I understand that. Jack, make your shows um, 9.30, I think. Well, you're now, see, already I had to leave, Karen. I, I, I did that video that you see about the scammers, and then I rushed down and had dinner, and uh, 
you know, I said to Karen, I've only got time for like one and a half dark shadows because I got to prepare some more for the live show. And so it really cuts into that time Saturday night. And of course, so we can vary it. Sometimes we could do it on Friday night, you know, Sunday. I tried Sunday at 8 p.m. once it didn't work. People are watching TV and stuff like that. Heck, I like to watch TV on Sunday. Karen is watching that awful 90 day fiance stuff. She puts headphones in for that. And I usually watch Mark Levin and sometimes uh, uh, Trey Gowdy, you know, but I don't always agree with Trey Gowdy, especially when we talk about funding the war in Ukraine. Um, I would uh, certainly be for the funding of Israel. All Christians should be. And that doesn't mean that I don't think, you know, they're ne- they do need to be careful when they're bombing Gaza. It's very difficult because Hamas walks amongst the civilians and puts their bombs in the hospitals and in the uh, the uh, schools and everything. They just uh, they you know they want you to bomb civilians, so they make it very difficult to try to eliminate Hamas when they're walking amongst the uh, the citizens of uh, Gaza. <laughs> Oh, boy, is Trump Elvis's cousin? Of course not. Of course not. Oi, oi, oi. Ah. Well, there has been uh, talk, uh, Philippe, I, I want to pronounce your name a thousand different ways, Philippe, that um, that uh, Pastor Bob Joyce is writing a book, but it will not be published until his passing. I've heard that a number of times. I like the long time shows. What are the odd times? Well, I don't really know. I know I've never done a show in the morning, Hearts Wild. I've never come on at 10 in the morning because I'm usually just barely up at that time. Usually, I have to admit it. Um, Now, as the nicer weather comes in, I'm going to try to. uh, Oh, I'm not even showing my new shirt from Ross's. Hmm. Yeah, my. (laughs) Hillfinger. <laughs> um, I um, I thought about the morning, but that won't happen too often. Then I thought about the afternoon time, you know, uh, once in a while in the evening. I mean, Sunday evening's a fairly good time because Karen's watching two hours of this 90-day fiancé stuff, and the show never ends. It never ends. Sandra says, hey, Jack, can we talk about uh, signs of the last day sometimes? I have several videos on that, like uh, AI sometime getting scary out there. Yeah, I don't know if I'm, I'd, I'd probably have to have a guest on that knows a lot more about AI than I do. But I did see this, maybe you saw this story too, Sandra, where they can take your life and they can they can make a movie out of it that makes you look really bad, you know. They can have you uh, they can have you um, doing uh, posing for pictures you never uh, or or videos, and they can they can have you look like you've been arrested. You're in cuffs, and uh, you're you're on your way to jail. They can really, you know, they can really do some damage there. So yeah, it is scary. It is scary. Do we really know what Elvis looks like at uh, his age? Looking at Pastor Bob, can anyone say they detected masking of any kind? Masking. (laughs) All I know is when I look at Pastor Bob Joyce, I think I'm looking at Elvis Presley. Um, and I don't think that of anybody else. The gardener does not look like Elvis, but he has the Kenny Rogers look. I'm talking about the gardener at Graceland and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the fact that he looks like him and sounds like him, that's, that means something. We also have a video up uh, questioning whether he could be the love child son of Elvis Presley. Not too many people think that, but I did that video as well. So check that out. Check that out. Um, there's just too many coincidences. 
if you even believe in coincidences, and I really don't. What does he mean, a mask, Phil? <laughs> a mask like we would see in one of those uh, spy movies or whatever? <laughs> Hello, Renee. Don't walk away, Renee. You knew I was going to say that, right? Or is it Rennie? See, I caught it. Rennie. Oscom. Uh, hi from Iowa. I bet you're happy all those politicians left town, right? And has it warmed up? Because when the politicians were there, Rennie, it was freezing cold. Oh, boy. How do you deal with those winters there? We had a fairly mild winter here in New York, but it was still biting cold. But we didn't have that much snow, really. We had some snow, uh, but we didn't have as much ice as we normally have. And I was glad about that, you know, because you're always afraid tenants or somebody you love is going to fall down the stairs. Yes, yeah, so I've heard about Elvis having plastic surgery, including a nose job, maybe like around 1975. Yeah, I've heard that. Absolutely. And now there's uh, things like Botox, you know, and and there's rejuvenation of the skin. Um, there's other methods now. You don't have to get a facelift. And boy, with sometimes when you see someone that has gotten a facelift, you say, no, no, no. It can be a, it can be a horror story. I mean, look at what's his name from um, American Idol and now Britain's Got Talent. I think it's starting to calm down now, but it, it, Kenny Rogers had a terrible facelift, uh, remember, before he passed away. And then in his uh, last years, it kind of relaxed and he started to look like Kenny Rogers again. Anyone ever eat a Kenny Rogers Roasters? I did in Texas. Yes, I did. When he was in hiding, he had to have some sort of plastic surgery. Makes a lot of sense. Hmm. Could be. I know he was a uh, master of disguises, you know, for a long time. Aging naturally is nicer. Well, it depends. I have seen people uh, like Marlo Thomas has had a lot of work done. Anybody know Marlo Thomas from the St. Jude commercials? And she was that girl. I think she looks pretty good. I think Kathy Gifford looks pretty good. She's had a lot of work done. I think it looks nice. Uh, but then you see these horror stories that, that happen. Horror story. Disguises, right, Ted? Yeah, I would agree with you. He's very good with disguises. I miss his, uh, I miss Kenny Rogers. I miss his music, Hearts Wild. I don't know, though. He played at, uh, in in downtown Newburgh, New York, at a, at a, um, um, kind of a minor league baseball stadium that they have right in the, I guess I could say the ghetto part of Newburgh just about. Uh, I want to say Delano Hitch. Delano Hitch. I didn't go to the concert, and I always regretted not going. I knew someone who did security there, and they said Kenny was uh, not nice. You know, he was, I'm not going to be signing autographs. I'm not going to be taking pictures. Don't approach me, that kind of thing. Talking to the people backstage and stuff, you know. But, of course, when he hit the stage, he was Kenny Rogers. So it's never good when a star does stuff like that, you know, but you don't know what was going on in his life at that time. Yes, that's right, Ted Richards. Uh, uh, they fell in love during a taping of the Phil Donahue show. Um, Marlo Thomas was the, the guest for one solid hour, and she looked at him. I've told this story before. Maybe you know it already, right? Um she looked at him and said, I don't know who the woman is in your life, Phil, but she's a very lucky woman. And they started dating after that. And before you know it, they got hitched. Harp? No, Harple Blues. Elvis is dead, y'all. Okay, well, you certainly are, uh, since this is America, not that you are necessarily in America, I have no idea where you are. You can You can say that. You can say that, and you may be right, or you may be crazy, but then again, there, it may just be a lunatic you're looking for, Harpo Blues. Hmm. <laughs> Yasmin, hello. Speaking of horrific plastic surgery, what happened to Priscilla's face? Yeah, I've seen, uh, 
I know what you're speaking of. It's obvious that she's had work, but I don't think it's really too bad. Uh, Change of Habit is a great Elvis movie, says Scott Baker, who joins us late. Hello, Scott Baker. And, um, yeah, Change of Habit is in the Sabrina thumbs up column as well. Ray Stone joins us. Hi, Ray Stone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Would it be okay to say that you and I uh, messaged uh, back and forth this week? I hope I don't say something I shouldn't say. We did. And um, tell them what the name of your group is. I'm sure you want new members. Um, we should come in well over a thousand on this when you include the replay. This could be a 2,000 because of the title. You know, you got to put those magic words in there. I don't have to tell you about that, Ray Stone. You know about those magic words. But it was good to hear from you. Jimmy Samples, not Junior Samples. Hi, Jack. How are you tonight? Uh, you guys are going to keep me uh, talking to my voice goes hoarse. But I'm so appreciative I say that, and I mean it with all my heart. I'm so happy and surprised every time I come on here. And uh, you just join me, you know, you just join me. Uh, it took me a long time to get to this level, you know. It took me a long time, and without the Bob Joyce uh, topic, it, it wouldn't have happened. I'm very much well aware of that. Ray knows what I mean. Um, people just love this topic. It's the topic that keeps on giving, and I'm losing my voice now. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. How are you spending your birthday, Jack? Um, usually I have my traditional birthday uh, cake uh, that I first had in 1960. And it, and it, it, this has been passed on to my son who has it too. It's a pineapple whipped cream cake, yellow cake with uh, two layers of pineapple filling and uh, whipped cream. And that's my traditional birthday cake. Hard, getting hard to find pineapple filling because rather than do the bakery route, uh, Karen is planning on making it this year. And I'm all for saving money. You know, it's we don't have a big family here. My kids are in uh, Texas. So um, um, all she can find so far is strawberry. So um, I uh, triple layer, that's the way to go, Richard. We know our sweets. Oh, I bet you miss those New York bakeries, don't you, Richard? And that New York pizza. Is there good pizza down there in your neck of the woods? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, I can't even get the cough drop open. This is what happens. Um, I don't have a cough, but I have a need to get rid of the hoarseness. Yes, they have pineapple buns at our D. Filippi's Bakery here. Oh, you would fall in love with DeFilippi's Bakery. It's no longer owned by Mr. DeFilippi. He owns Daddy's Donuts here in town. Anyone ever have Daddy's Donuts? It is a chain, but it's a very limited chain. Delicious donuts. Absolutely delicious. Better than Dunkin'. Better than Mr. Donut. There was a Mr. Donut in Western New York that I went to. And definitely better than um, the sweet things. What do they call them? <laughs> those donuts that put icing on and then they put the the chocolate icing somebody help me here good night kevin with two e's i'm so glad you stopped by king creole is my favorite pizza sucks here not new york really you, usually if you find that um that sign richard that says uh, there's a big difference between how they put it uh, the big chains and, 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 and what you'll have here, what you'll find here. When you see that sign, that's a sign that they're using. It used to be Roma products, but now they've been bought and it's a different name. If you see that sign, it's usually a good sign. What do you think about, uh, they can't make hard rolls down there and in South Carolina, places like that because of the water. I know that there was a bakery, I think it's in South Carolina, that has a big silo and they ship the water down from New York. And it's a really popular bakery in South Carolina because 
other than that, if you want decent bread that's got some kind of crunch to it, I think you got to go to Jersey Mike's. Any Jersey Mike's fans out there? I love Jersey Mike's. And I have, you know, we have authentic sub shops here, but I still enjoy getting one of those giant uh, subs from Jersey Mike's with the baked lays. I love baked lays and they're hard to find. Ray Stone says, hi, Ray. What is the name of your, uh, am I getting it right? Elvis Alive is Bob Joyce. Is that correct? Matt Joyce said his name was uh, Charo, named after the movie Charo. Don't know if you guys knew that or not. Yeah, that's 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 certainly been brought up before, but a lot of people probably are hearing it for the first time from you because we haven't talked about that in a while, you know. Um so um, even if I'm right, and I, I think you believe in only one Bob Joyce, and that's difficult to make it work, but even if, uh, uh, how do I want to say this? Whoops, didn't want to do that. Uh. Say I'm right, and... Walena was the German girlfriend of Elvis Presley. And uh, well, Walena has known Elvis for many, many years, hasn't she? And say if uh, this guy Robert Wayne Joyce came along, Elvis is busy being Elvis, and in 1975, she marries Robert Wayne Joyce, and that's a different man who doesn't look at all like Elvis Presley at first, but as he gets older, he starts to look at look more like him, but you can easily tell the difference. Just watch my videos. <laughs> um, sometimes a Bob Joyce appears that looks different than the other, however I titled that video. <sighs> what say you? I'm confused, Ray Stone, so I don't know what. <laughs> Matt Joyce said Bob was Elvis years ago. Well, Sam Sammy, you have to you have to prove that. You have to show us exactly where we could get that quote, because I don't know that to be true. I don't know that. Someone's writing in orange. Hmm. Maybe it's YouTube telling me to get off. Get off. <laughs> and, of course, Charo was also a legendary, when I say legendary, she was very popular, wasn't she? Uh, doing the hoochie coochie in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And yeah, she was popular for a long time, Charo. But, yes, I know it was an Elvis movie. I was never big on the Elvis movies. I've never been to Graceland. I'm not that kind of Elvis uh, fan. I was the kind of Elvis fan that played his music on the radio. I mean, on my radio show and, and played it. You know, The Wonder of You, to me, is a wonderful song, as uh, is Kentucky Rain and so many others. I Can Dream and all that. Kathleen says, hey, Richard Lyon, Gambino's Bakery is my favorite for king cakes in New Orleans, my hometown. Well, that's on my bucket list, and I'll remember that. Uh, Got to go to Gambino's Bakery. I mean, how can you forget Gambino's Bakery? Somebody is uh, messaging me. Um, are we going past two hours here? We are past two hours. See, you guys are just, this is great for my watch time hours. It really is. I'm so happy you stopped by, Ray Stone. I am. Um, and you're talking to a good man there, Traveling Tiger from Wales. He showed me the Tom Jones Muriel, which is uh, under a uh, overpass. Does that make any sense? Uh, they don't exactly have great statues of Tom Jones there. He's a great friend of Elvis Presley, of course. Um, but uh, supposedly this is in the Albert Goldman book, Elvis Presley said to, to his, uh, to his Memphis mafia, whatever he said, this Tom Jones, he wears his pants too tight. I think that's rather lewd. 
I think that's rather lewd. <laughs> yeah. You miss the vintage movies? They're always good. Oh, Shirley Temple, huh? Yeah. I saw her, you know, in the 70s. Uh, Shirley Temple Black was, uh, she did a lot of talk shows. She would guest host for a week on the Mike Douglas show, I remember. We only had four channels. That's right. You had to get up and physically change the channel. Here's someone new. Shay. Hi, Shay. Uh, what do you think if Elvis made a comeback today? I think... Um, I think that he has no desire to sing at Madison Square Garden or do any of that kind of stuff. I think he kind of like if he should happen to be alive, likes the life that he has now and uh, always wanted to be a small town preacher, but with a worldwide voice on YouTube, on YouTube. Um, as uh, he may have told Spa Guy, um, the Lord gave me dreams to reach the world. So be a small town preacher, but reach the world via YouTube. And then we have a new person, J Cat. Hello, J Cat. Welcome to Worldwide Ramblings. Amazing. So I, I, you know, if 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 Elvis were alive, he's eighty nine, and he's not looking for too much excitement now. You know. He's not looking for too much excitement. I don't think so, Shay. You know, I, I think people would come because it's Elvis Presley. Um, I, You know, you either have a heart that's inclined to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Uh, even Christians know it's hard to, to surrender the flesh and, and really... Put your whole whole heart, soul, and mind to to walking your talk. So I, 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 a lot of people would come to see him, but I don't know that they would have transforming experiences in Christ. You know, um, I've I've been told by people that go to household of faith that uh, Bob has a way of looking at you like he's looking right through your soul. Can I get an amen on that? Because I know people have had that experience, like he's looking right through you, through in, into your soul, so to speak. And one of the things that they thought, the person that told me about this encounter, was that they got the impression he was deciding, uh, trying to decide if this couple that was brand new and there's always a brand new couple was there because of Elvis or was there to uh, praise God, you know, because that's it. Pastor Bob Joyce has said from the pulpit, you know, um, if you're here for any other reason uh, other than to praise God, you're here for the wrong reason. Huh? So, uh, Sabrina says, I swear he was born in 36. It's nice that you're emphatic about it, but then you have to uh, you have to build a foundation around it, you know? Yes, he's a messenger of God, Sabrina. He really, really is. Let me see here. I can't believe I'm still on at this late juncture. Richard Lyon. <laughs> now I've just revealed to the audience that you do have my phone number. So I will privately read what you wrote because that's probably how you wanted it. Jack, I am thinking of transitioning. I'm shocked, Richard. I'm shocked. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'll have to digest uh, Walina's whereabouts. <laughs> but you do believe that's Walina. That's interesting. Um, okay, I'll talk to you about that. 
this week, but remember, I got hospital duty on the St. Patrick's Day. I cannot, uh, I cannot speak when I'm in the hospital or eating my corned beef and cabbage, Richard. <laughs> but I love to talk to you. You're a good man, and I really hope that you don't have a tuba player uh, in the next condo over as you move into your new condo in West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> I really hope you don't have someone playing street rap next door. Hey, Marty Greco. You're mentioning the sax on stage. We, t- we talked about that in the early portion of the show, so make sure you watch the replay. Who played that sax? Who played that sax? Was it? Because they didn't put up the praise and worship. You guys are so smart, you know. You're so smart. Who played that sax? Was it James Sexton? Is he even still alive? He played sax for Elvis a lot. Was it, um, it wasn't Boots Randolph who played a lot of sax, especially in the movies, because Boots went on to be with the Lord Jesus. He played for Jimmy Stir. Um, and, uh, uh, of course, he had his big hit with Jackety Sax by Boots Randolph. Jimmy Stir has all his arrangements because uh, Boots toured with Jimmy Stir, And um, so it's either Jim Spake or James Sexton, uh, possibly, that could have played that sax, <laughs> maybe. Uh, who do you think played it? Huh? Huh? Maybe somebody attended. How about Phil Driscoll? He's a trumpet player. I've seen Phil Driscoll in concert. You didn't know that, did you, Marty? Uh Greco, I don't remember him playing the uh, sax, but you could be right or you could be crazy. I don't really know, Marty, um, whether your elevator goes to the top floor or not, because I just don't really know you. I knew a Greco here in the Hudson Valley, but it wasn't you. Uh, But I went to uh, see Phil Driscoll in concert at Faith Assembly of God in Poughkeepsie, New York, back when I was doing Christian radio, and he was playing that trumpet. And, uh, you know, if you listen to the song, We Exalt Thee, well, I think he changes it to I Exalt Thee. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, oh my Lord. And then he plays the trumpet so incredibly. Phil Driscoll, haven't heard that name in a long time. Now we have John Thumb. He's a kitty. Oh, a kitty. (coughs) See, the voice is going after this long. John Thumb, where are you from? Meow kitty. Um, My uh, sister-in-law had a cat named Mr. Meow. Mr. Meow, he was uh, a long-haired Persian. He knew he was a handsome cat. He just looked in the mirror every time he passed by, you know. Bill Clinton played sax and very well. He did it on, uh, he did on, um, come on, I, I name's right there and I can't say it. You know, the uh, talk show host, he played on that show and it was a big moment for him. He's also an actor. What's his name? Help me out, Richard. Oh, Arsenio. Thank you, Belinda, also known as Margaret. Arsenio Hall. Yeah, that's right. Arsenio Hall was a great talk show host. He lasted for quite a while. Thank you, because it scares me when I can't think of something I know that well. Um, I love it when you sing praise. Mm, I need to sing praise a whole lot more, a whole lot more. But uh, in the shower or, you know, when no one else is forced to listen to me. Carlos... Trombetta from Brazil. Wow. Terrific. Hi, Carlos. Welcome way out there in Brazil. See, I don't usually do two hours and 13 minutes, but you guys just don't want to quit. 123. I think we're catching on here, uh, Ray Stone. And you didn't even put your link for your group. I know it's a private group and you don't accept everybody. Uh, And then you, you know, I understand that if they don't behave, uh, you... You know, you uh, hit the hit the button that opens up the trap door. I get that. Meow, John. Well, she, Hearts Wild's coming on to you. I think she's pretty good looking, too. Oh, Jake Judy was here, and I never got to joke with him. Are you still here, Jake Judy? 
I'm sorry I didn't spend more time with Jake Judy. I just wanted to let you know, ladies, he's one of our younger viewers, and we don't have too many. Jake Judy is, um, I'm not saying he's Rob Lowe, uh, John Stamos' younger version than they are now, but he's pretty close. Jake Judy is the one you want to set your sights on. He's a good-looking dude. He showed me a picture of himself in an email. Yeah, and he's uh, 30-something maybe. I don't know. He's very young, and uh, he may be our youngest <laughs> viewer. I don't know. Everybody now, please state your age. How old are you, Jimmy Samples? Are you younger than Junior Samples from Hee Haw? Hmm? Um, well, he he did uh, play a lot of sax, uh, Jimmy, for Elvis, but it was mostly in the movies and a few recordings. I don't think too much on stage because they, they say here that uh, James Sexton was the one most likely on stage at an Elvis concert. Thank you, Jack, for keeping uh, God and Jesus alive in your talks, as well as being funny and very intelligent. Well, Karen, I like you a lot. And all for, and for the wonderful, fun evening. Good night from Canada. God bless you all. Thank you for stopping, Karen. I really appreciate it. Now people are giving their ages, and women don't usually do that. Thank you, Karen. Good night. Laura Shatley is 57, so you're a babe. You're a babe in toy in Toyland. <laughs> um, we all know Richard is younger than me, and he'll tell you that. That's what happens when you get popular. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of that Lucy thing. Uh, are you too poop to party? <laughs> Remember Vita Vita Vegemin? Vita Vita Vegemin, that was the only way that Lucy could get dr pretend to get drunk uh, for television and it'd be acceptable, you know? You couldn't even use the word pregnant, and they didn't want her to do. Uh, she did, They didn't want a pregnant Lucy. They wanted her to hide behind uh, uh, laundry baskets and stuff and, and cl close out the season and, and, and not do do it for television you know people would obviously find out that she had given a birth to uh, desi jr but uh they didn't want to be put that in the storyline and lucille ball let them know it's going to be in the storyline i have 55 million viewers every week it's going to be in the storyline and so you couldn't say you had to say expecting you had to have twin beds, and one foot had to be on the floor of both actors. One foot had to be on the floor uh, at all times during those bedroom scenes. However, in 1956, 57, whatever, it was perfectly acceptable for as the show was closing, a misbehaving Lucy who had been naughty again, it was perfectly acceptable for Richard to pull Lucy over his knee and spank her at the end of the show. <laughs> All I can say is human beings have always been weird creatures. It was weird then, and it's weird now. Don't you agree, Richard? <laughs> okay. Ray Stone just gave his age 60 here on Monday. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ray. Happy birthday to you. And someone said, I'm 51. Oh, so you are young, uh, Lee, in Wales, 51 and still hot to trot. You're going to be that way at 78. I know a 78-year-old. As long as there's a pulse, you know what I'm saying? It never goes away. You got to fight it all your life. You got to fight the flesh all your life. You do. Sabrina is 61, close in age to Richard. <laughs> You're not 80 years old, Richard. You're not 80 years old. You and I both know that. You, you, uh, you do a physical uh, job. David is... Um, Everybody's given their age now. 
Karen is 61. Um, Patty is 78. Well, God bless you. That means you only got 20 years left, though, so make them count. Make them count. Women always live longer than men. Well, not always, but you know what I mean. One hip chick is 63 and still looking hot. Ted Richards is 55 and will be 56 on April the 10th. Yeah. Okay, Richard, you said it. 62 years in June. Yes, yes, yes. So happy birthday, Ray. And uh, J-Cat is 52. And uh, Mikhail joins us. I can't believe this. People joining us late. It's 1.20 in the morning. 56 years old. Yeah. 56 years old. Janet says, hubby and I still stay up until 4 a.m. It's a bad habit listening to the old music and watching movies. Do you watch naughty movies sometimes, Janet? Tell the truth now. Our kids think we're weird. (laughs) Praise the Lord. He doesn't. He doesn't. Amen. 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 Yeah, it's night people. But, you know, as it gets nicer out there, I want to be up before 11 in the morning, you know. And if I have trouble, like on a night like this, when I'm kind of up from doing the show, I may have to take a second Xanax, and then I'm going to sleep till noon, you know, and I should be in church this morning. That's another thing I've got to work on. It's another thing. So welcome, Mikhail, Michael G. Good to have you aboard. And, oh, yes, Traveling Tiger is single, but uh, you're going to have to do some of that traveling to the United States. Now, you know, you know, Lee, I invited you to Summerfest in Pine Island, New York, on I think it's July the 10th or 11th. The 11th sounds right. Um, the Jimmy Stewart Polka Fest, uh, the uh, Polish Fest, whatever you want to call it, at the Polish Club in Pine Island, New York with um he said he liked the, he likes the lion sleeps tonight and jimmy's special guest at summerfest in pine island will be the original tokens with the original voice jay siegel so it would be a fun time it would be a fun time to meet you at least think about it <laughs> and uh you know there's some new york people that watch here Richard Lyon's wife is 28, so he must be like, you know, he must have the status of Richard Gere or something, and I just didn't know that, you know. Um, Let's see. How does this go? Mick Jagger's current wife is younger than one of his daughters. Younger than one of his daughters. (laughs) And he has a kid to her. Young young baby. Ain't going to see too much of daddy, is he? but should be well taken care of. Although Mick did say that uh, he's not going to give a whole bunch of money to his kids. Not going to give a whole bunch of money to his kids. So I always like to close with scripture. Thank you so much, everybody. We've never maintained this large of an audience this late into the show. So we'll be doing more live shows, we will. And I usually promo them, but sometimes I just pop on to pop off. So set your notification bell. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. Please please hit the like uh, button. Many have. That helps me. It really, really does. Um, and I thank you so much. I thank you so much, all of you, including you, Janet Williams, and you, Richard Lionhearted, and J Cat, and Sabrina, even though you're not Sabrina Joyce, and um, of course, Hearts Wild. Just love that name. Galatians 5, beginning with verse 1 in the NIV, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I um, declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised and he is obligated to obey the whole law. Um, You are trying to be justified by law. 
you who are trying to be justified by law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. But by faith we eagerly await through the Spirit the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. Uh, the only thing that counts is faith is expressing itself through love. In other words, it's Jesus plus nothing. It's Jesus plus nothing. It's a hard experience, not an intellectual intellectual understanding. You're not going to know everything. Adam and Eve wanted to know everything, and look what mess that got us into. Right, Robin Roman? Good night, Jack and all. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Sabrina Shell from Canada. And, uh, oh, there's just so many tonight. I'm just very appreciative for you joining us for Worldwide Ramblings. And um, watch for promos for future live shows. Future pre-recorded videos can pop on. If it's a really hot video that I think is really super hot, I'll probably do it as a premiere, and you'll know about it in advance, all right? So that's it. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Happy St. Patty's Day. We've been on for almost two hours and 30 minutes, 2.25 right now. We'll leave it at that. I like those even times, you know. I uh, appreciate you so much. Keep watching. Please watch the other videos here and uh, like them and share them. And, you know, um, uh, it really helps us tremendously. Not that I can afford a Tesla yet, but, you know. Maybe I can pay a few bills. Big God bless you. Bye-bye.